In the not-too-distant future, society had evolved into an ultra-social Darwinist nightmare. Every individual was ranked, measured, and valued solely on their ability to contribute to the survival and success of the most powerful. Wealth, intelligence, physical ability, these were the only things that mattered. Anyone who fell behind became invisible, discarded like obsolete technology. Marcus was born into the lowest caste. A black man in a society that saw him as disposable from the moment of birth. His parents, like so many others, were workers for the elite, trading their labor for the barest essentials, living in the shadows of the gleaming towers where the powerful resided. The ruling class preached that only the fittest survive, but Marcus knew that the game was rigged. It wasn't just about survival, it was about who controlled the board. Marcus refused to accept the fate society had assigned him. From a young age, he had been different. He saw through the lies and manipulation that kept his people oppressed. Where others saw walls, he saw opportunities. His mind worked like a chessboard, calculating risks and moves, knowing that brute strength and inherited wealth were only part of the equation. The real power lay in knowledge and strategy. As he grew older, Marcus realized that to triumph in this ultra-social Darwinist world, he needed to play the system against itself. The elite thrived on competition, on pitting people against one another, and they underestimated the underdogs, especially someone like Marcus. He spent years learning not just about technology or economics, but about people, how they thought, how they made decisions, and how they could be manipulated. He knew the rich felt invincible in their towers, but they were more fragile than they appeared. Greed made them predictable, and their arrogance blinded them to the potential of someone like Marcus. His break came when one of the tech moguls, Winston Draven, announced a new project, a neural implant designed to make people more efficient workers. It was marketed as a way to unlock human potential, but Marcus knew it was just another way to control the masses. The implants would link directly to a corporate database, tracking every thought, every action, turning workers into little more than drones. Marcus infiltrated the project, posing as a low-level technician. With his intelligence and quiet ambition, he quickly gained access to the core of the operation. He found the weaknesses in their system, their over-reliance on technology, and their blind spots when it came to understanding human emotion and rebellion. While everyone else was focused on installing the implants, Marcus was planting seeds of his own. He programmed a backdoor into the system, allowing him to take control of the data flow. But that wasn't enough. He needed something more to bring the system crashing down, a symbol that would show the world that the elites weren't invulnerable. Draven himself became that symbol. One night, as Draven was giving a speech on the future of humanity's evolution, Marcus hacked the neural implant system, turning it against the elite. As Draven stood in front of thousands, preaching about how only the strong survive, his words suddenly turned to gibberish. The implant in his brain, now controlled by Marcus, forced him to speak the truth. Draven confessed to every crime, every manipulation, every exploitation that the elites had committed. The crowd watched in stunned silence as their leader, their symbol of power, crumbled before their eyes. Marcus didn't stop there. He used the system to liberate those who had been enslaved by the implants, giving them control over their own minds again. Within days, riots broke out across the city, and the towering empires of the elite began to fall. But Marcus didn't take power for himself. He knew that replacing one tyrant with another would only perpetuate the cycle. Instead, he disappeared into the shadows, becoming a legend. Some said he had died in the chaos. Others whispered that he had gone underground, continuing to work for change.